it's always good to start with the resistors, just get all the resistors done, just plop a few in at a time. It gets a bit chaotic if you do them, put them all in at the same time. Just, just do a few at a time. So I'm, right now I'm just literally putting all the 2Ks in, just because that's a nice large amount. Uh, you just kind of keep on going until you think you've got too many in there. And then you're like, whoa, chill out. All of these 2Ks are for current limiting resistors for the LEDs in the seven segment display. The reason I've gone for 2K is to make the seven segment display uh, a lot uh, dimmer because it's, um, it's pr they're pretty bright. And also the fact is if they're, if they're dimmer, you can get away with having uh, more of them plugged into an Arduino without any buffers. Which, uh, and the problem with buffers in a circuit is, you know, it makes it more complicated. So let's just keep it nice and simple. When you're turning on a soldering iron for the first time, make sure when you're turning it on to make sure the first time it's get up to temperature, it already has solder on it. So when you're turning it on, just dab it until there's a bit of solder that goes on it. So I've got four left and these are the 10k precision uh, resistors and what differs between a precision resistor well first of all what are these for but basically there's one two three four and then this goes off to ground basically how this works is this is sort of like what you call a voltage divider these are 10k pots but arguably they could be anything really, as long as they're not too big or too small. You might be able to get away from 1K to, I don't know, maybe 100K, I'm not sure. 10K is a, a nice, fair medium, uh, and it's easy to get precision pots for these. So basically what happens is there's this, um, there's this switch. This is the octave switch, and you're selecting between octave zero, octave one. I'm writing this backwards, this makes sense in a minute. Octave two. Octave three and octave four, so it's like doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Uh, it's I find it quite important in performance to do doo -doo -doo -doo, obviously. <laughs> so there's a wire going off from here, and this is going to the VCO circuit. C O. So there's a VCO, and that's the middle wire of the rotary switch. And then the outside five wires basically is there's one wire that goes to ground, actually connects to this part of it. Then there's one that connects between these two resistors, and then there's this one that connects there, and then there's that one that connects there, and then there's this one that connects to four volts. Now, I don't know whether you're correlating yet, but basically this is a one volt per octave oscillator, much like most of, pretty much all of Eurorack synthesizers, the standard is one volt per octave. And I'm not gonna go into that, because hopefully you know, and if you don't know, search up one volt per octave. So yeah, four volts is, four octaves worth of volts <laughs> and then you you end up getting this which is zero volts that's octave zero zero volts but then this divides it off into one volt two volts three volts and four volts so you've got octave one octave two octave three octave four oh yeah sorry i forgot there's um there's actually a buffer in between there's an op out there's an op amp buffer so it makes it like um, so it makes it a very high impedance so wherever you switch this it doesn't actually affect what the fudge is going on and it doesn't fudge things up so that's what's going on and that's why we need these to be as close to 10 as possible well in fact they don't have to be as close to 10 as possible they could be close to anything as long as they're close together and i'll tell you a little secret and this is a lazy thing is actually i am not sure whether you could probably get away with normal 10k resistors because most of them nowadays are reasonably within uh, the tolerances and in fact the first one i made any old i just soldered the first 10k resistors i came to 
and yeah it's in tune so if you're not feeling it literally just sold a 10ks in and see what happens but you know don't hold me to that you might be very unlucky and get one that's really bad but i, just, I don't know i haven't seen one yet so basically how do we get these you can a do what it says on the bill of materials and purchase four precision oscillators and what these means is um they're exactly the same as other resistors except they go through a stricter uh, quality control. So basically, uh, I d this is a guess, but I guess a factory makes a load of 10K resistors and then the ones that are closest to 10K get chucked in the pot uh, and these are sold as expensive ones, which are slightly more expensive because they're a little bit rarer. And the ones that are a little bit out of tolerances from the manufacturing process are just normal resistors. If you can't be bothered to get 10K precision resistors, just get a bunch of these, uh, just get a bunch of 10Ks, get your multimeter. So you're measuring the resistance. What we got? I can't read backwards, 9.98. So I'm gonna put that here with 9.98 and then I'm gonna go with this one. And hopefully, fingers crossed this is simple. 9.97, I'm gonna put that here. You could get a bit more thorough with this. I'm just trying to remember with my memory what the piles are reasonably. Ah, oh, God damn it, 10. So these are relatively different. 9.98, boom. So these two are the same, reasonably, near enough. Oh no, 9.96 could get bundled with the 9.97. I'm just hoping I can find four 9.98s. Oh, ooh. Oh, what do you reckon? I'm gonna go with that, I don't, I don't care, screw it. There we go, 9.98. Right, so there are your precision resistors. Uh, put some capacitors in, oh yeah. After ceramic capacitors, then you go with the electrolytic capacitors, making sure that the short leg, which is also the same side as the gray stripe, goes towards the white side, the opposite side to the plus, because the long leg is the positive. IC sockets just make sure the semicircle matches up with the semicircles. See the semicircles? You can flatten the legs down to make them stay in there so when you turn them around they don't fall out. So something that I found is Arduinos, another very good thing to socket. I used to not socket them and it was the worst idea I ever had because yeah when they break they, they break and they're a pain to get out. These are 30 pin and they're wide sockets. I still, I'm yet to find an actual 30 pin socket, though I use 32 pins. I either push out or fold down the back uh, bits of uh, metal from these. You've got a 30 pin socket. So pretty much all of it's soldered on. The only things that aren't are the ferrite beads. I haven't got any. I don't know whether it really matters, but whatever. I'm literally just using some resistor legs or just some legs that were just cut off from before and I'm just bridging this. I mean, the thing is, is it doesn't really matter if you haven't got a massive amount of stuff plugged in to the same power supply. It's just a, a, a measure to stop some buzz. And if you do this and you notice there's a bit of a bit of noise, then the first thing you do is plop in, a, uh, plop in some ferrite beads. To be honest, there's arguments that they don't make a bit of difference and it'd be better to add a 1R resistor. However, the issue I found and what I do with, a love, with my other designs is I put a 1R resistor in place of here which actually does a better job of isolating noise if there is any. Fingers with the pulse width modulation on this, if you add a 1R resistor it's in there, it's just enough to make the pulse width modulation adjustment actually change uh, the tuning of the note. Pop in the small one. And the other one, I'm gonna do both of them at the same time. Both at the same time. Boom! And solder on down. Next one, just soldered this one in place. Uh, it doesn't need to be that straight, but make sure it's reasonably straight. Then you put this Molex connector on. To be honest, you could probably get away with literally just soldering wires from this to the actual rotary switch. 
if you actually look on this, there's an arrow which is actually the center that connects to the center. Then it goes, it goes ground, one volt, two volt, three volt, four volt, and that the ground goes to pin one, and then pin two, pin three, pin four, and pin five. And then you're sorted. But we'll solder this on. I'm using these because uh, just a bit more removable. But if you can't find this and you don't want to use that, then just just use wire. There's nothing stopping you. It would be a good idea to add the LEDs right now, but annoyingly, I've got the wrong display. Uh, so I'm going to do that tomorrow. So these are all exactly the same. Solder them yet. Yeah. Make sure they're all nice and lined up. And then solder them down. Once those are in, you get these preset potentiometers. You make sure all of the screws are facing upwards. So 100K. Just got to make sure you got them in the right place. I nearly soldered them in the wrong place. Putting this on and then wiggling them in until they sort of line up with the holes. Oh yeah, just look at that. They've nice and lined up with the holes. And screw these bad boys up. This is now time to put in that rigidity bolt at the top. Just to sit it in there. You might be better using a plastic grub screw, but you know, each to their own, each to their own. And that keeps these preset potentiometers nice and up against the faceplate. So we've just taken it apart again to put the screen on because the screen has finally turned up. And this means now we can actually finally uh, solder in place the LEDs as well. So I'm spreading the legs around a bit and then I'm just going to solder that in. If you look closely on here you'll see there's a tiny little, there's tiny little positive, uh, positive uh, symbols. The long legs of the LEDs which are the anodes, the positive side of the LEDs, just go in there, just pop them in. No need to solder them right now because you need to make sure that they actually line up height-wise to the PCB. Pop the panel on, tighten it up, making, every, making sure everything's lined up nicely. The rigidity bolt. What we do to make sure they're all lined up is we lay it down, push them all in from the back. And then if you look, they're all nice and pushed up. And now we solder them down. Oh, make sure, make sure they stay in place. Then solder them on down. So that is the main PCB done. I'm just gonna put the um, Arduino in. I've already put these in. All you need to do is make sure that the semicircles on the top or the dot on here line up with the semicircles on the uh, PCB board. So these three are all facing that way. And then the Arduino faces the opposite way. Now it's a case of wiring up the rotary switch and also popping together the control uh, panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the the little uh, collar, the stop collar back in the fourth hole along. One, two, three, four. Pop it on the lowest. So we've got the flat bit. This is where the screw on the actual uh, potentiometer connects and that connects there. So the back bit needs to be exactly opposite to where you put in the arrow. The semicircle part of the actual rotary part is actually facing that way. If you fancy you can use a, um, what are they called? A, rat, a, a socket, that might be nice, or if you want to be really careful and live on the edge like me, I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. <laughs> nice and tight, boom, lovely, oh yeah. You'll see there's actually some really faint numbers next to these pins. You need to solder pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, and pin five, and then also the central pin. This all is gonna to connect to this Molex connector right here. There's an arrow pointing on this side. That's actually the center one. Number one being the lowest, so we solder number one to this to this pin. And number two, number three, number four, number five. You can literally just wire them to, you don't need to use this pin, this header. You can skip this if you really want, I mean it's, I just, you know, like keeping it nice and neat with these things. I use the same single coil wire that I use in my other projects, like the filter project and stuff like that, and the LFO project. There's a link on my website to get this stuff, but there's no reason why you can't use stranded wire or any wire really, whatever works. Oh, then you're literally just soldering them on this rotary switch. You can get ones with actual holes coming out of these, but I kind of prefer the PC belt B round ones which are here. So, for the connectors, I'm using, like I've mentioned, these Molex connectors. And uh, the reason why these are good is because 
they're pretty solid when they get, get nice and stuck in. They're like these, but you can actually connect whatever wires you want. We'll talk about these later. I'll actually do a video at some point in the near future about how to make your own Eurorack style power supply cables because they're a lot easier than uh, you may think if you haven't really thought about it. But um, for these, you can get basically what you do is you have these little metal things that focuses. You have these small metal things. Uh, these come on, um, they can come bagged separately or you can get what I get, which is a large reel of them. And it works out a heck of a lot cheaper for a, for a couple of minutes every time. You're just going to go like this. And then there's this beautiful crimper. You can get cheaper ones, but I bought this one and it's lasted me for ages. Before this, you don't even need this. You can just use pliers. I managed to get by just using pliers really finickily, the skinny nosed ones to actually just get these onto the end. In fact, the first one I'm going to do with pliers, just to show you, just to show you that it is possible to, without having to buy a stupid um, crimp thing. Oh, this is going to be sketchy. Oh, it's really sketchy. Uh, takes a little bit of finesse, but it is possible. Isn't the prettiest or the most time uh, efficient, but I've managed to put one on with a pair of pliers. So if you only ever plan on doing this and there's six of them, might be worth just using, you know, your pliers. Skinny nose pliers are, are much easier to use than these wide ones, but. Right, we now have them all connected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push them into the actual case. Uh, this goes the yellow one first. This pin, pin number five, give it one, one twist for good measure. And then you've got a removable. Just in case you've made a mistake here, uh, it saves you from having to remove that again. It's up to you, you don't need this. You could just use a wire. When I started, I probably would have most definitely just used the wire instead of a connector, but you know. Now it's time to put the jacks onto this board. This board, it says on a label on the side, it says jack soldered this side. So that's the side that the jacks are soldered. So you kind of look where it lines up to the board. You see there's one that's drawn with a line. That's where the ground is. It's quite obvious where the ground goes. I don't think it'll actually fit around in any other way. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm actually gonna just put them in like you're putting bullets in your revolver. I've never actually put bullets in a revolver so I, I couldn't tell you what that feels like. Put this, which is the female header of this, onto there. So now that lines, so now that's gonna line up to this and then you don't need to faff around again. Uh, uh. Oh yeah. Here's one thing to note is you'll notice that this will have a tiny little bit of a gap. Uh, it's up to you whether you have it again flush against the PCB or against the um, actual uh, connector, but I usually have it flush against the PCB, so I kind of push it up with the screwdriver that I used to put the knobs in. So this is flush to the PCB when you solder it on. So it's just a case of just screwing them up. Wee. Look at that. Nice. Right, so the build of it is actually done. Um, uh, you probably should test it before you put the knobs on. Uh, right now we're going to go over and have a look at it. This is completely uncalibrated, so who knows what's going to happen when you turn it on. Uh, I'm not going to cover troubleshooting. Uh, I'm going to leave that for another video that kind of encompasses the whole thing. However, I can tell you, I did test this last night before I put the um, the seven segment display on. Basically what happened is it was working except for the pulse width modulation attenuator for the CV was actually affecting the pulse width modulation as well. And I was like, why the heck is that? Have I made a mistake in the new, in the most recent design? Because this is the most latest one. It turns out I had a couple of cold joints uh, on here. I wasn't sure which, so I basically just, when you're in doubt, 
the first thing you should do is reflow all of the solder points. Maybe turn up the solder, uh, the soldering iron a tiny little bit. Have a look. Uh, Fonk has a good picture of what they should look like, solder joints. So try and copy that. If there's any blobs or if it doesn't look like it's making proper co connections, chances are it isn't. So turn up the soldering iron a little bit and just reflow them a little bit. And good luck. <laughs> uh, if it still doesn't work, then it's a case of double checking and double checking again because if you've done it right it will work so just check all that some type that i've tell you there's been a couple of times i've had to go through bit by bit and check the resistor values and just see what mistake I, I have made and it always ends up okay and it's always a silly mistake but uh you never you just don't know until you check check all the polarities of the electrolytic capacitors check that the uh volts regulators the right way round check this little transistor's the right way around, check all of the ICs are in the right way around. The problem is if you have put them the wrong way around, there's a chance that they might have broken, but not to fear, um, uh, hopefully you have a spare, try that. And if that works and you still wanna see if the older one does work as well, take it out when you know it's working and put that one in again, and then you can double check whether it's broken or not. But if it got really hot, you might be lucky, you might not. Who knows? Make sure that the ferrites are there or it's just a wire that is going straight along that is like, like in here because I haven't got any ferrites. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and um, that's about it. The main thing is to check the orientations and the connections between everything. If you keep an eye and have a look at, like with your eyes, look really close and just look at every single solder joint and see if there's anything that looks a bit dodgy and redo it. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm gonna be going and plugging this in now and that's gonna be a different video because we're gonna go and calibrate it.